What's up everyone, welcome to Workshop Rebuild. In today's video, I'll share with you guys everything you need to know about the BMW Slash 5 Airhead wheel bearings. In this video, I'll cover all the parts that are needed for this assembly. Over here on my right, I'll be sharing the hand tools and the measuring tools I'll be using. And in the middle, I also made a custom fixture which will help me assemble and it will also help me measure the preload for the taper bearings. The preload for the taper bearings is probably one of the most critical parts of this assembly. So you wanna get that just right. So stick around until later on in this video where I discuss the preload and the shimming process for the inner spacer sleeve. But right now, let me share with you guys all the parts that are needed for this assembly. In the middle of the screen, you'll see many brand new parts that came in from Euromode Electrics. We have four double lip seals for each axle, we'll need two. We have two brand new bearing cover gaskets for the covers up above. We also have two taper bearings for each axle shaft. So on this table, I have everything laid out. It's basically an exploded view or whatever you'd see in a drawing. But I hope if I go through all the parts with you, this will give you guys a better understanding of how everything should be put together. So the shaft that I'll focus on is actually the front axle shaft. This is exactly 14 millimeters in diameter. And to accommodate the same taper bearings we'll have on the rear axle shaft, we're going to use a reducer sleeve. This reducer sleeve has an ID of the same shaft diameter over here, but the OD is 17 millimeters. And that's why we can use the exact same taper bearings on the front axle and on the rear axle. Now all the parts in the middle make up the bearing pack. And this is actually what you'll see on the rear axle shaft, this portion right here. And now I'll focus on the parts. So we have exactly two taper bearings and to keep those to a certain distance, we need spacers. So this right here is our outer race spacer. This right here is our inner cone spacer. And this right here is our shim. The inner shim will keep the taper bearing cones apart from each other. And it will also allow us to set the correct preload. Now on either side of this bearing pack, we also have a top hat or a pressure sleeve. You will notice this sleeve is actually very big in diameter on the one side. This goes up against the taper bearing cone. And then on the outside, this will go up against the shoulder of the reducer sleeve right here. And you want to make sure that this surface is perfectly clean because we will have a double lip seal riding on this surface. Now, when we compare this with the one on the far left, you will notice this one is smaller. The OD is exactly the same, but that lip is much smaller, but it also accommodates on this surface, a double lip seal. And then on the far end, we also have a nut, which keeps everything in place. And that also holds the axle shaft on the motorcycle. If you guys have any questions about the parts I just shared with you guys, please feel free to leave a comment down below. Right now, I'll move on to the hand tools and the measuring tools that I'll be using in this video. The first measuring tool I'll use is a digital vernier caliper. This will allow me to measure the shim within this bearing pack. The next tool I'll be using is a 15 to 80 foot pound torque wrench. This will allow me to torque down the axle nut on the very end. To do that, I also need a 22 millimeter socket to a half inch adapter. Now over here, I have a half inch to quarter inch adapter because another thing I have to make sure is that we have the right preload on these two taper bearings. To measure the preload on those two taper bearings, I have a torque meter. This right here is a very sensitive torque meter that goes from zero inch ounces to 48 inch ounces and zero inch pounds to three inch pounds. So with this torque meter right here, I will be able to measure the preload on these two taper bearings. More on this later on in the video. The next thing I wanna share with you guys is this custom fixture for the rear axle shaft assembly. So let's get right to it. The fixture that I have on this table is made of wood and it is exactly four inches by four inches by 10 inches long. There are exactly two bores within this block. The top one is 22 and a half millimeters in diameter and the bottom one 90 degrees to this bore is nine millimeters in diameter. The first bore will accommodate the larger end of the axle shaft and I can place it within the block to line up with the bottom bore. Not only will this keep the axle shaft perfectly vertical for me to assemble everything, but in this nine millimeter hole, I can insert a punch and that will stop this shaft from rotating once it's within the fixture. Another feature I added to this fixture is a V groove on the back end of this wooden block. This V-groove runs the whole length of the block and here I added a strip of rubber material that has been fastened on one side. On the other side, I still have the ability to tighten the rubber material with two screws. Once I have my bearings in place and everything is torqued to spec, I need to then make sure that the preload is correct. In order to hold this assembly, I can simply place the bearing pack on the V-groove 
and allow the rubber material to wrap around the bearings. All I have to do is tighten down these two screws. I can then grab the torque meter with a 22 millimeter socket, place it onto the axle nut and turn it over to read the preload. This will ensure me I have the correct preload reading between the two tapered bearings. So for the next step, I'm going to assemble everything. I'll grab all these smaller parts and place them strategically on this axle shaft. Once everything is hand tight, I'll bring it over here to the fixture, torque it to spec, and then check the preload settings. So let's get right to it. I managed to get my first taper bearing preload reading with this torque meter. The two taper bearings that are within this pack are brand new, but the shim that's in between the taper bearings is still the original shim. Now, every time you replace taper bearings, you have to reshim your pack, if it's for this application or any other application. Now, with that in mind, I just went ahead and assembled everything so I can see if it's too tight or too loose. In this case, the reading was at four inch ounces. According to the factory specifications, I should be anywhere between 21 and 42 inch ounces, which is much higher. Whenever your shim pack is too loose or your value is too low, that means your shim is too thick. You have to remove material. You have to actually bring those two cones in the taper bearings closer to each other. Now you could run into a different issue where your bearing pack is too tight. What that means is your inner cone is too tight and you can't even turn over the shaft and that wouldn't be good. You're putting too much preload on the two taper bearings and that means your shim is too small you want to add more material that means you either replace the shim or even add a shim behind that wedding band that's inside of your bearing pack so with that in mind i'm going to take this assembly apart and i'm going to focus on the wedding band and i'm going to remove material i'm going to remove about half a thou to one thousandths of an inch i'm going to reassemble it and see what values we have then So I'm back from the shimming process and the preload rating on this bearing pack is now within spec. Previously you guys saw that the preload rating was around 4 thousandths of an inch and now after removing material on this wedding band the rating went higher. Now we have a rating between 16 and 24 inch ounces. The reading on the torque meter is very sensitive so you will see the needle jump a little bit as I turn it over because I'm not turning it over with a constant speed but it is between 16 and 24 inch ounces which is in the good range. I found a website online that discusses the BMW slash 5 motorcycle taper bearings and also some other taper bearings from some newer models and even the lesser wheels so if you guys would like to read that article I'll have a link down below in the description. 
The bearing preload tests I've performed in this video were all done and verified with the torque meter. I know this is not a tool that everybody has at home and it's not the cheapest tool out there. So I'll share with you guys one more method that also BMW shares in their service manual. I'll leave the page right here on the screen in case you guys wanna read that for yourselves. But I'll perform that test for you guys right now so you'll be able to see how it looks like. With the axle shaft in the vertical position and the axle nut torque to spec, we will be able to perform this test by placing both thumbs on the outer spacer sleeve. This outer spacer sleeve should be a little bit tight between the outer races of the taper bearings. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna try and push it in the opposite direction while holding the axle shaft a little bit with my index finger. As you guys saw, the outer spacer sleeve touched up against the inner spacer sleeve and it made a little click, but there was a little bit of resistance between the outer races of the taper bearing and the outer spacer sleeve. Now I'll try to bring that back just like that. So you have to make sure the outer spacer sleeve has the correct preload. Without those ratings, I'm not exactly sure if you can achieve this by yourself at home without any devices that give you a reading, but this right here is what it should look like if you'd like to perform this test for yourself. The bearing pack preload ratings are now to spec and the rear wheel and the front wheel axle are ready to be installed into the wheel hubs. This wheel hub right here is for the rear wheel and that one right there is for the front wheel. Now before I install these bearing packs into the hubs, I wanna make sure all taper bearings are greased and packed. So what that means is I'm gonna take the whole bearing pack apart again and I'm going to grease it up with some grease gonna reassemble everything and make sure they are torqued to spec. Then I will place them in a freezer for a few hours so that the metal shrinks ever so slightly. This will make the installation process much easier. Another thing I wanna do before installing the bearing pack into the wheel hub is I wanna grab the wheel hub and I wanna heat up the inner diameter. This will also allow the aluminum to expand and all I have to do is probably just drop it in by hand and it will be seated. Been about 20 to 30 minutes now and I let the rear wheel hub now cool down or at least reach room temperature. As you guys can tell, the rear axle shaft is spinning over just fine. So that means I probably assembled everything correctly. Now over here in the meantime, I also installed the front axle shaft within the front wheel hub. Now both of these wheel hubs are ready for the rest of the assembly process. And before I get to the lip seal installation, I wanna share with you guys why it's really important to check the preload after you have installed the bearing pack within the wheel hub. So once you install the bearing pack within the wheel hub, you wanna check your preload once more just to verify that your preload is within spec. The reason why we're checking the preload after the installation process is because the outer race of the taper bearing has an interference fit between the wheel hub and the taper bearing race. This could cause your taper bearing to shrink as everything cools off, and that means the preload could tighten up. If your preload tightens up, that means your value will be too high and you could cause premature failure on your bearings. So that means it'll wear out quicker or it could even burn. So I'm gonna check the preload values with the torque meter once more and I'll share with you guys both values on screen. Everything in front of me is assembled correctly and I can continue on with the next parts. So over here on this table, I have the bearing cover with a double lip seal already installed. It is flush with the top end of this cover. And then on the opposite side, you will see about three millimeters of height difference right there. And before we install the cover onto the wheel hub, you wanna make sure you have a brand new gasket or you could reuse your old one, whatever you prefer. But before you put that on, it will look like this and this cover goes onto this side of the wheel hub where the taper bearing is a little bit more exposed. Now to tighten everything down, you will be using five bolts. Uh, these are brand new cadmium plated and you will see a wave washer. This wave washer acts like a lock washer and these five bolts will go into those five bores. There's also another important step before you put this on. You wanna make sure that your double lip seal is lubed up and that your surface on your top hat is in good condition because once you put that onto the shaft and on that top hat, 
your double lip seal will be riding on there. And if you lube it up prior to the installation, it will last that much longer. Now over here, we have one more double lip seal. It has a metal casing, but it's still a double lip seal. As you can see, it has a duster and a lip seal. And this actually goes on the other side of the assembly. So that right there is the front wheel hub, and this is the rear wheel hub. You can see we also have an area where we can install a seal, and this seal will go down in there, and you wanna tap it in place and make sure the lip seal is actually riding up against your thrust spacer right down in there. Now, I could go ahead and install those parts onto these wheel hubs right now. It wouldn't be an issue, but I still have to lace the outer rim with brand new spokes to the wheel hub. And since I don't have that on here yet, I don't wanna have those double lip seals in the way as I go and put this onto a truing stand. If you guys finish installing those small parts, you're pretty much done with this assembly and there's not much left to do. In my case, I still have a lot of work ahead of me because I have to lace these to the outer rim pull on some new tires, and then I can put them back onto the BMW R60 slash five. If you guys enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button down below. It just helps this channel grow a little bit quicker, and that way I can pump out some more videos. If you guys have any questions about anything I discussed in this video, feel free to leave a comment down below, and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. Subscribe if you haven't already, because then you will be one of the first to see the upcoming videos on this BMW R60 project. So thank you for watching, and see you guys next time. Peace.